Earlier this week, the U.S. Federal Reserve chairman gave his own gloomy outlook on the American economy. Ben Bernanke says the U.S. economy faces, quote, significant headwinds, frustration, and reduced momentum. But there is no need to change course as of yet. That means it's unlikely that there's going to be a third round of quantitative easing once this second round of $600 billion runs out at the end of June. Equally, no indication from the Fed that there is about to start pulling back those extraordinary measures before the end of June. Bernanke said what he calls, quote, accommodative monetary policies are needed while still keeping an eye on inflation. He said growth this year has been slower than expected, and households are under pressure from those significant headwinds. The jobs market remains, quote, far from normal. Richard Fisher is the president of the Dallas Federal Reserve, and he told me he thinks Bernanke is right to stick with the course. I personally would not support a third round of accommodation here. Uh, And it's pretty clear we're done accommodating, we'll be finished in June. Then the pace at which we tighten will depend on how the economy proceeds. So a recent article by a fellow journalist suggested that, you know, the government, the Congress in this country isn't doing what they should be doing. Mm-hmm. So the only the only group left is the Federal Reserve. You know, and it, it's up to them to, to make Lisa, this happen. I, I love that. But, you know, it's like we're wizards and we can solve everything. We're just a central bank. And if we do it, then they won't. It, it, they need to pull their socks up and get their act together and realize that we're in, as President Bush would say, and this is not a central banker term, this is 41, we're in deep doo-doo in this country. So they're going to have to help us shovel it out. But one (laughs) of the things that, you know, doesn't seem to be changing very quickly also is this psychological shift amongst many Americans out there that, oh my God, if there's one little thing that seems to show again a negative prospect down the road, they're going to rein it all in one more time. How do you change that psychological shift? Well, I think for your viewers, uh, you're too much of a pessimist about Americans. We are a can-do nation. We get things done. We've been through a very difficult jolt. We are picking up our economy. It is a slow process. It was paralyzed, and now it's back to life. And then um, seeing a glimmer of demand out there in the global economy, and we'll sell into it, and we'll sell into it very effectively, but it's going to take time, and we're just going to have to be patient. There are ways to make it worse. And the way to make it worse is to increase the regulatory burden, disincent people even more, increase the tax burden, spend money improperly. And very importantly, we can make it much worse by the misconduct of monetary policy. So are we then counting on demand from outside of this country, particularly from China Mm -hmm. and other emerging markets to help stimulate this economy? Because God knows it's it's not coming from our consumer because there is no wage growth and we still can't find jobs. That's a very good question. We don't care where the demand comes from. What we care is that we are able to produce enough to meet that demand and in producing the goods and services to meet that demand, we create more jobs for American people. Here we are coming to the end of QE2. And the question on everybody's mind is, what will that end bring to the marketplace? You know, I have no way. I made my living in the equity markets for almost three decades. uh, And uh, I have no way of forecasting equity markets. Markets correct. They don't run to the sky. And they also don't plummet to zero. It's a manic depressive medium. And I'm not manic depressive enough to forecast what's likely to happen (laughs) in the stock markets.